and good morning. I'm so pleased to be with you all today to talk about the institution that we all love, Whittier College. As I enter the end of my first five years as president, I've been reflecting on what brought me to Whittier College in the first place, our students. The students we serve today and into the future will leave Whittier College with a quality education that will help them become the leaders who will change our region, our country, and the world. I am so honored to have this opportunity and so excited and optimistic about continuing to support our wonderful students into the future. It is no secret that higher education is experiencing a period of disruption. Great changes that the higher education community has been anticipating for at least the past decade are here now. The changing landscape of higher education reflects demographic shifts, fewer high school graduates across the country and more students of color as well as issues of affordability for all families, regardless of income or resources. New technologies providing new ways of teaching and delivering education, and an economy that means we will all have to be lifelong learners. What does this mean for small colleges like Whittier that are dependent on tuition to survive? It means we have to respond to these changes and do things differently. The good news is that Whittier College is well placed to face these significant headwinds. The future is bright for Whittier College because of the students we serve, the faculty, staff, and alumni who are devoted to our mission, our location in one of the most dynamic places on earth, our Quaker values of social justice and respect for others, and our innovative spirit that has nurtured a culture of embracing change and thinking outside the box. Together, we've embraced a vision for the future that will help sustain the college for years to come. We're doing this by focusing on three strategic imperatives that champion student success. Number one, embracing diversity, equity, and inclusion to ensure that Whittier College is a welcoming place where all feel as if they belong and can succeed. Number two, finding ways to diversify revenue. And number three, ensuring that we are aligning our resources to our mission because every dime we spend comes out of the pockets of our students and their families. The following story illustrates the vision we have for Whittier College in 2028, five years from now. I'm going to talk about two students in the future. Let's call our first student Tyler. Tyler grew up in the Bay Area and came to Whittier after taking a year off after high school to travel and tinker on the mobile app he's developing. Tyler appreciates being able to live on campus at Whittier College due to the high prices for housing in Los Angeles County. This morning, he rolls out of bed five minutes before his first lecture is scheduled to start. Not being a morning person, he strolls all the way to his desk and signs on for his first class still in his pajamas, feeling appreciative that Whittier classrooms have been equipped for hybrid classes. Later, Tyler gets dressed, leaves his room, and runs into his neighbor, a student at the local community college who's planning on transferring to Whittier next year. After his yoga class in the GAC and grabbing food at the CI, which Tyler's very appreciative he could order on his phone, Tyler heads to the college's new experiential learning center where his project group is meeting to prepare for next week's Shark Tank presentation and to meet with his career counselor about internships and community engagement opportunities in the local area. Tyler's next class is art history. After a class discussion with the professor about the characteristics of art from different regions of the world, he and his classmates are thrilled to move to the virtual reality classroom where they will travel through art museums narrated by their professor. Many of the students have not had the opportunity to experience these art museums in person. After his last class, Tyler rushes to the Shannon Center where his eSports team is having a tournament this afternoon. And then there's Jeanette. She's a single mom of four, mid-30s, who came to higher education later in life. Jeanette is what we would call a non-traditional student. She's worked hard to get through community college and came to Whittier because of our strength in social work and our partnerships with master's degree institutions. Jeanette loves Whittier and loves the opportunities to get valuable experience while a student. She also appreciates the ability to take classes in person or online, particularly in the evenings, which offers her the flexibility she needs to be able to be with her kids. 
She also appreciates the job she has on campus, working in the president's office, because as a commuter, this allows her to stay at Whittier during the day and save money on transportation, while getting important skills and supplementing her financial aid. Jeanette has a long time interest in learning to write poetry and loves her Lux Enrichment course with Dr. Douglas Manuel, a Whittier College professor. The Whittier College Education of Tomorrow will be as transformational as it's been for the past 135 years. An important aspect of our Quaker heritage and values is the will to challenge the norm in the face of criticism and resistance to change. Quakers have always been change agents, and as a Quaker abolitionist poet, our namesake John Greenleaf Whittier sought to find commonality and improve the well-being of everyone. We will continue to uphold these values as we evolve and innovate what we do because it is the essence of what makes us Whittier College, a high impact, high quality institution that changes lives. What Tyler and Jeanette will experience in the future is happening today on college campuses. What we are seeing is change that puts the evolving needs of the students first. Student markets are changing, and to be sustainable, all colleges must learn to adapt and to meet students where they are. This is the key to our mission of student success. So how are we going to get there? Our sustainability and growth plan includes three main elements. First, we are reinvesting our core academic programs and focus on implementing new recruitment strategies that are closely tied to the local market and the growth in community college transfer students. Second, we are developing a revenue building initiatives linked to new technology, providing an affordable, high quality, accessible education to a diverse student body. And third, we are developing a financial plan that leverages our strong liquidity and asset value while allowing us to decrease our debt and invest in our future. For point one of our sustainability and growth plan, we believe in the value of the high quality traditional liberal arts education that Whittier provides. While like most colleges, we have seen enrollment drops due to demographic shifts and pandemic challenges, we believe that Whittier's location and academic strengths will continue to attract students who want to have an on-campus education. We also know that 85% of college students pick an institution close to home. Unfortunately, for at least the past decade, Whittier disinvested in the local market while it sought students from low growth regions outside of Southern California. We're working to rebuild our local pipeline for both high school and community college students. We've also invested in staff, marketing, and advertising, and other areas that are critical to our success. This will take time, but we are confident that we'll be able to get enrollment back to pre-pandemic levels over the next three to four years. It's important to note that we are too dependent on traditional tuition revenue for our financial sustainability, especially as the traditional student market declines nationwide. Key to the second element of our sustainability and growth plan is developing revenue generating initiatives that attract the new growing markets of students. With unanimous support of our Board of Trustees, we have allocated over $4 million in new programs and technology that will deliver an accessible education to these new markets. Our Ready Launch is an online bilingual certificate for teachers. Our talented faculty have also recently approved an online certificate in graphic design, and we're working with faculty to develop and launch by next year a degree completion program for working professionals that provides access through the use of online and hybrid technology. This program will take the best of the Whittier College experience, a personalized plan of instruction imbued with our ethos of service and social justice, and make it accessible to individuals who cannot put their lives on hold to get a traditional in-person degree. Third our, our, third, our going forward plan recognizes that while we have financial challenges, we've identified sources of funding for our future. Like most small colleges, Whittier's financial model was in trouble way before I got here and before the pandemic. The decades long problems have been exacerbated by the debt that Whittier took on in 2014 in order to finish the Science and Learning Center. While this is a beautiful physical addition to our campus, a building cannot reverse national declining birth rates and declining student markets. In short, we cannot recruit the students who were never born 18 years ago. 
Unfortunately, this debt came with a strict provision that says the college cannot have any deficits. And by the way, most colleges like us have fluctuating enrollment, revenue, and deficits. More importantly, this debt is 100% collateralized by the 80 acres of our campus. In practice, this means that any deficit could trigger the bank to take action and they could move to own our property. Fortunately, this will not be the case. Luckily, we started working on this element of the plan more than a year ago. We engaged a national real estate firm to help us value our real estate assets in order to negotiate with the bank, and it worked. We were able to demonstrate a real estate market value of more than $250 million, more than the $55 million of debt value in 2022. We are what is called being over collateralized. We tied up more of our real estate than was needed to back the debt. Fortunately, we were also able to get the bank very excited about the future of the college. They provided us with a one-year waiver of a debt covenant, which gives us time to refine our plan. We have a secure path forward that includes our healthy liquidity and more than two times our debt, our endowment, and our assets, which total $400 million. We are financially strong and not in danger of closing, and we'll continue to work with our bank to pay off or restructure our debt so that our assets can truly work for the college. To be successful, we must focus on all three elements of our plan at once, growing enrollment, launching new programs, and continuing to improve student outcomes and retention. Coupled with our strong fundraising program, all of these things drive revenue. And we will continue to manage our resources in support of our mission. This dual focus on revenue and resources is the linchpin of our financial success. In closing, let me be clear. We believe that offering both a traditional on-campus program and options that provide for flexibility for students, such as online programs, are the key to financial sustainability in the future. Let me also state clearly that while we have financial challenges, mostly because of the structure of our debt was taken on in 2014, we have a plan to realign our assets and resources to fund a bright future for Whittier College. And the thousands of students will continue to educate and graduate. Increased financial flexibility, combined with our projected revenue growth in traditional programs, new innovations, and continuing strength in fundraising bode well for our future. This is hard work, but important work, that will take all of us who love Whittier College. By working together, we can ensure Whittier College is around for another 135 years. I look forward to continuing our conversations and hearing your ideas, as well as working together to move Whittier College forward. Thank you. Is men's soccer or any other sport being eliminated? Thank you for your question. We have no plans to eliminate any other sports. This is a decision that leadership and the board have been discussing for quite some time. It was a very difficult decision and we appreciate and know that it had impact on individual students. However, like all of the decisions we make, we need to focus on our mission and, our, and that includes our academic mission. And we need to align our resources to that mission. It was the right decision to make in terms of moving resources to where it makes the most sense in support of our academic programs. We're gonna to continue to support the students that we have who are impacted. We've given individual um, support and we'll continue to basically talk to them about their futures at Whittier College and beyond. For at least five years before you became president, Whittier's undergraduate enrollment averaged a robust 1,700 students. Since you became president, enrollment is down to 1,092 students, including over 113 students fewer than last fall. That's a total loss of 36% and a 10% drop since last fall. You compare enrollment at Whittier to other local institutions, but Whittier lost more new enrollment during the pandemic and has been slower to recover comparatively. What decisions have you made that contribute to this alarming decline? Why have your plans for enrollment, such as local recruitment and community college recruitment, only led to more losses? Well, first of all, let me clarify some of the enrollment 
data that has been floating around. Um, it's true that we last fall were at just under 1,200, and that is a significant drop from where it was in previous years pre-pandemic. We had a significant drop in fall 2020, as did many institutions in the United States because of the pandemic, exacerbated in LA County because of the strict pandemic rules. Since fall, we have lost about 70 students, if you count the significant number who graduated in December. So it's not 113, it's actually more like 70 according to our census. A, a portion of that is 25 to 30 first year football players who left. And we always lose, unfortunately, between 25 and 30 of our football players every year. Um, we have looked at and have done analysis on enrollment. What we like to look at in enrollment is not just institutions that are close, but institutions with whom we compete. And if you look at the institutions with whom we compete, and we have that data, and whom we compete is basically the institutions that students choose when they get admitted to Whittier but go somewhere else. And those institutions are mostly two University of California campuses, a significant number of California State University campuses, our local community college, and Redlands and Laverne. If you look at our enrollment trends over the last five years versus those institutions, there are some that are a little up or flat and some that are down. Um, our numbers really, really align with a lot of the other institutions that we compete with. Um, a lot of the reason that we have not seen any sort of traction yet on the local market is because until last fall we could not recruit on high schools and college, uh, community college campuses. According to the health rules of, of the public health department, we were not allowed to bring students on campus. We could not do sleepovers for students. So we were really hampered. The other reason is what I said in my state of the college is the college over the last decade at least was really looking outside of the local market and moved a lot of the resources. And so we are doubling down on the local market. And that means rebuilding relationships that have not been there for at least a decade. High school recruitment, community college recruitment really takes being on the ground and having people at those institutions and we didn't have the people at the institutions. And so we're optimistic about the future. We're building that now. We're starting to regroup and do some of the things that the college had done in the past. I'm hearing a great deal of concern that the college's financial situation is so precarious that it might close. Can you comment on the likelihood of that happening? We are not in danger of closing, as I said, in the state of college, and we are optimistic about the future because of our plans, our three-step plan. As I mentioned in that address, you know, the three points are really working on the traditional programs and working on recruitment, investing in recruitment, developing new programs, and also working on our financial situation. So we are highly, highly optimistic. The other thing that really excites me is as we've been working on these plans, especially over the last several months, is we have talked to our bank, we've talked to our national real estate partners, we've talked to WASC, our accreditors, we've talked to donors, alumni, and even a lot of people on campus are really excited about this future and are very optimistic. And they want to they want to stick with us. Our bank, our bank wants to stick with us. The real estate firm wants to partner with us. And I think that that bodes well for Whittier College in the future. Every new leader inherits a record of achievements and challenges from prior administrations. From the earliest days of your presidency through your most recent communications, you have faulted the past leadership with creating problems that you must address. And yet, there is no evidence that you've made any progress towards solving these issues during your four and a half years at Whittier College. What are three specific achievements that you've accomplished to strengthen and advance the college that will define your presidency? Well, first, I think it's important to point out that the problems that Whittier College is facing are not unique to Whittier College. The experts in higher education, as well as leadership and the Board of Trustees at Whittier have been talking about the broken business model for higher education for at least the last decade. In fact, in 2013, 
there was a book written and a chapter devoted to Whittier College that discussed how Whittier College was facing these challenges and what they were trying to do to reverse the challenges because the trustees and leadership at the time really recognized that there was a problem that was coming down the road. So I, I really truly applaud prior leadership and prior trustees for number one identifying these issues so long ago but number two taking the risk to try to find solutions and I think what I always remember is that if everyone had the perfect solution, everyone would be doing it. No one knows exactly what the answer is to solve the problems in the sector, but what's important is that we recognize it, we come up with possible solutions, and that we're brave and courageous enough to actually work on them. That being said, I do think we've accomplished a lot since I've been here. Um, the financial situation, as I mentioned in my state of the college, was something that was a lot of work and was hanging over our heads and that the debt covenant and as I said in the state of the college speech it wasn't the fact that we had debt it was a fact that we had very restrictive debt that really ties our hands in terms of what we need to do especially in terms of tough times which higher ed is in right now so I am pleased and thrilled that with the support of the Board of Trustees and our Chief Financial Officer and Leadership Team we were able to again to show the bank that we have a plan forward and we'll continue to work for them we we got I mean with them we got a one year waiver on our debt covenant and they're excited for us to come back and show them our six year plan and also show, show the plan for paying off the debt and they want to be a partner in that the second accomplishment is really fundraising. One of the things that we did when I came in is we have a beautiful campus, we have wonderful buildings. We really thought it was time to focus on what happens in the buildings and in the classrooms. And so really put student success forward in terms of donations and really talking about student success. And that includes scholarships, that includes money for things like mental health, which we all know is an issue, especially in the post-pandemic world, and really trying to meet the students where they are in terms of scholarships. Our fundraising has increased significantly in the past five years, and we've raised $2 million since Thanksgiving, and we're really, really proud of that. We are particularly proud of the McKinsey Scott gift. We are one of just a handful of institutions that are that are not HBCUs or tribal colleges or large urban colleges that received her gift. And we have to remember that she was very public about how she chose leadership teams, she chose institutions, and she looked for places that were focusing on the things that align with her personal values. And so we are really, really proud of our fundraising. And, and her gift was the largest gift in the history of the college by multiples. The third accomplishment is our reaccreditation by WASC. So last summer we received reaccreditation for eight years, which is the same as many of the institutions in the area, many institutions like us, and in the world of, of the pandemic, I am thrilled and excited, as was the board, to get that decision. We had many accommodations. Um, we had commendations for our efforts on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how we're putting that forward in terms of student success. We had commendations around our efforts and collaborations between alumni, our career center, and our center for engagement with communities to really help our students um, really tie to what their interests are and passions are both on and off campus. We had commendations for thinking creatively about a future financial plan. We got a commendation for working so hard on really getting the campus through COVID. And we had a commendation for the leadership of our board and for their engagement and how active they are in the board. You know, accreditation is about continuous improvement. And in the spirit of continuous improvement, yes, there's things we can work on and that we need to work on and we recognize that. We need to build trust back on campus. We need to have metrics around DEI. Um, because a lot of people talk about DEI, but WASP specifically asked us to come up with metrics. They asked us, what are we doing on enrollment? And we actually presented um, our enrollment plans to them in November 2022 um, and our financial plans, and they signed off on it. So we're in great shape with WASC. And I know it said three, 
accomplishments. But one I really have to talk about is, because we hear a lot about turnover of staff. We don't talk about all the talented faculty, staff, and leadership that we've been able to attract, particularly in the last couple of years of this difficult time. And we're getting people to come and join us because they believe in the vision and they believe in the students we serve. And I am really, really happy and excited about that and excited to have people who really want to be on board to support Whittier College. Would you please address the Save the Whittier group that purports to be concerned about saving the institution, its faculty and its students, yet appears doing everything possible to harm the institution, its faculty and its students? Would you please take a stand and tell us why they are wrong, why they are waging this vendetta, and what you are doing and what we should be doing to counteract their negative publicity, their negative comments, and their efforts to sow divisiveness, mistrust, and enmity within our community. I am so appreciative to live in the United States of America, a country where freedom of speech and our ability to speak up and express our opinions is protected. That is such a big part of who we are as Americans, but also a big part of the mission of higher education here in the United States. I recognize that I'm in a leadership position. And one of the biggest responsibilities of a leader is being able to listen not only to the people who support you, but to the critics. And I appreciate the critics as much as I appreciate the support because it's the criticism and it's the conflict that helps us improve and help us, helps us move forward. I would not be doing my job if there was no criticism and I recognize that and that's the job I signed up for. It is so important, especially now, to recognize that these are hard decisions that we're making. And with hard decisions, not everyone's going to agree, and we accept that. But the key is that we are open and willing to talk about decisions that we've made and to learn, and also, more importantly, to listen and get input from people. I also really appreciate that the individuals who've been criticizing really have passion for Whittier College and really have passion for the experience that they had while they were a student at Whittier College. And they care about the college. And that's something that we can all really rejoice in together, that we all are very passionate about the college and we want a bright future for the college. I do have to denounce, however, the personal attacks, the threats, the misinformation, and especially the things that are targeted not only me, but my leadership team, our board of trustees, my family, and others on campus. We can do better as Quakers within our Quaker values to be able to sit down and talk to each other in a way that is respectful instead of threats. I also have to denounce the fact that there is some, some questioning of the decisions made by our campus safety leadership about how to keep those of us on campus safe for receiving threats. That is their job. They are a wonderful team and they're doing what they are supposed to do. We will continue to sit down and offer opportunities to talk to the Save Whittier group. We want to hear everyone's critiques. We want to hear the ideas. We need problem solving. And so that's the way that we're going to look at it going forward. I read that the college will be investing in local recruitment strategies. What can I, as a local Southern California alum, do to support this effort? I love that question. Our alumni, as well as our faculty and our students, are our best evangelists for Whittier College. And we want to see you at events. So the best thing that you can do is, is reach out to our admissions team. We'll definitely put an email on the website, especially if you're from the local area, especially if you went to a high school or community college in the local area. It'd be great to have you on those campuses talking about your experience, talking about all the great things that you learned at Whittier College. I was blessed to go to a college fair a couple weeks ago at the LA Convention Center where there are 10,000 prospective students. And it was a college fair that Whittier College had never been to before and that had been stalled for a couple years. And we had alums with us. We had the admissions staff. I was there. And it was just such a great time to talk to students and see what they're interested in. So we, we would love to have you and we'll get the information out about how you can help.